Okay, what's up guys? We got another event in Pokemon Go. This will be the last event of June. It's the Pokemon Go TCG crossover event. We're running through some tips for the event as always. Let's get into it. So this event's going down June 16th, 10 a.m. to June 30th, 8 p.m. local time. So in your time zone, this is gonna be the time frame. First of all, Melton will be unshiny lock. Normally Melton is a shiny lock Pokemon in Pokemon Go, but during this event period, if you open a mystery box, you can get a shiny Melton. We'll talk about how to get a mystery box in a little bit. Wild Spawns for the event, we have Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Charmander, Charmeleon, Squirtle, War Turtle, Alone Rattata, TCG Hat Pikachu, Slowpoke, Magikarp, Eevee, Spinarak, Natu, Apom, Nummel, Bidoof, Pidub, Wimpod, which is a new Pokemon, and rare spawns of Onyx, Chansey, Snorlax, Dragonite, and Slacking. Lunatone and Solrock are also going to be spawning in the wild, but after the event, they will be switching hemispheres. So Lunatone in the western and Solrock in the eastern. Raids during the event, one stars will be Chansey, Larvitar, Timber, and Wimpod. Three stars will be Alone Executor, Snorlax, Dragonite, and Slacking. Five stars will be Mewtwo, making its return finally. Between the 16th and the 23rd, Mewtwo as you catch will know the legacy move shadow ball and between the 23rd and the first will know the legacy charge stack side strike you can get two legacy mewtwo's depending on when you raid that pokemon mega raids will be mega venusaur both mega charizards and mega blastoise okay as always we have some research as well let's start with the field research task exclusive to this event first of all catch 10 pokemon will get you three raspberries catch 15 pokemon will get you either an ivysaur charmeleon or a squirtle encounter catch 25 pokemon will get you a venusaur charizard or blaster encounter catch 40 pokemon will get you a Stormax dragonite or slacking encounter that's a rare task probably spin five books after gyms get you a Wimpod and traded Pokemon will get you a TCG half Pikachu. Now I want to note this is probably not going to be the final task list. I have to run out so I don't really have time to update this video. So what I'll do is I'll just link below the Cerebi and Leak Duck website and just go back and check that out right before your event starts and you will go ahead and get all the actual official tasks because they're probably still updating it as I'm making this video. I do want to note though it's definitely going to be worth not actually catching some of these Pokemon. For example Venusaur, Charizard, Blastoise, Snorlax, Dragonite, and Slacking. All these are stage 2 Pokemon which means they get you extra candy. I recommend actually running from these Pokemon, throwing them in your stack task, which is a long list of Pokemon you haven't caught, and save them for next weekend on the 25th Dino Community Day. We have two times catch candy. You can be catching Dragonites and getting like 40 candies on a Pineapple Berry if you save them and catch them during that event. So I'm definitely recommend if you get any rare Pokemon you want a lot of candy for, save them for Dino Community Day next weekend and catch them then on Pineapple Berries. We also are going to have a bunch of collection challenges during the event. I'll just pause on screen, check it out. They're pretty simple. All of them are just required to catch certain Pokemon and you get certain rewards. There are some as well that require you to trade Pokemon. For example, the trade collection challenge, you actually have to trade away these Pokemon to complete them. So some of them you have to catch, some of them you have to trade, complete them. And there's actually going to be three more collection challenges that are going to start on the 23rd of June, which obviously I can't tell you guys right now because those are not dropping for another week, but these are collection challenges. Pause, check them out. With the event details out of the way, let's get into the tips. Starting with the wild spawns, as always, what are the best ones to go after? And there's a lot of decent ones during this event. This event seems to be a mega focused wild spawn event. First of all, we have Bulbasaur and Ivysaur, which of course evolving into to Venusaur. Venusaur, a good Great Leak, a good Ultra Leak Pokemon, and does have the Mega Form. And you can even run Shadow Venusaur as a strong grass type raid attacker. Good opportunity to get candies for that. But no, you do need to have Legacy Frenzy Plant on this Pokemon for it to be relevant. You have to Elite TM it or wait for an event where you can evolve for it. As well as Charmander and Charmeleon, same thing goes. Charizard is going to be good in the Ultra League and in some Great League limited metas like the Love Cup, as well as, of course, Mega Charizard X and Mega Charizard Y. And you can even run Shadow Charizard as a strong fire type raid attacker. Again, you're going to need Blast Burn on this Pokemon, though, so you're going to have to Elite TM it or wait for an event where you can evolve into. Finally, again, Squirtle, War Turtle evolving into Blastoise. Blastoise does have the Mega. It doesn't have as much use in PvP, so this one you'll probably mostly only be going for the Mega, but again, you have to wait to get the Legacy move Hydro King. We have Slowpoke, which evolving into Slowbro. Slowbro does have the Mega form, as well as Slowbro being pretty good in the Love Cup and other limited metas in the Great League. We have Magikarp evolving into Gyarados. Gyarados as well does have the Mega form. You want to make sure you have the Candies, XLs, High IVs for that, as well as Gyarados being good in the Ultra League and in the Master League, but you're going to need a legacy move of Aqua Tail on that Pokemon for the PvP metas. So wait for an event like before or TM legacy moves. There's a lot of legacy moves you're going to need to actually get these Pokemon up and running. Eevee evolving into Umbreon. Umbreon is going to be good in the Great League as well as in the Ultra League, but in the Ultra League, you do need to have it level 50, 100% IV excelled up, as well as Eevee evolving into Sylveon. Sylveon, not a bad Master League pick and not a bad Fairy type raid attacker as well. Spinarak evolving into Eridos. Eridos, a good Love Cup Pokemon for limited Great League metas. We have Nummel evolving into Camerupt. Camerupt does have a mega potential in the future. It's not go yet, but make sure you are ready for it when it drops. We have Wimpod, which we're going to talk about in a second. As far as rare spawns go, Onyx evolving into Steelix. Steelix does have the mega form, as well as Steelix being good in the Ultra League, but you're going to need XLs for the Ultra League. Chansey evolving into Blissey, but both Chansey and Blissey, very, very strong gym defenders. And Chansey at level 50 completely XL is a good limited cup meta Pokemon, like for the Love Cup again. Snorlax, which Snorlax, good Master League and Ultra League 
PvP Pokemon. Dragonite as well. Dragonite, a good Master League and Ultra League PvP Pokemon, as well as Dragonite and Shadow Dragonite, specifically one of the best Dragon type rate attackers there is in the game. And finally, Slacking, which honestly, Slacking, some people say it's good for gyms. I don't think it's good for gyms because it loses motivation, aka CP, very quickly since it's such a high CP Pokemon, but you can consider getting it for as a gym defender. Now, I do want to note, Ivysaur, Charmeleon, War Turtle are stage one Pokemon, meaning they get you 300 stars per catch. And Dragonite and Slacking are stage two Pokemon, meaning they get you 500 stars per catch. So if you do want a little bit extra Stardust, make sure you catch those higher tier Pokemon, those evolved forms of Pokemon, because they do get you more Stardust than a regular catch and even more candy as well. So you can use Pineapps on those Pokemon. And I believe get up to like, I think it's like 20 candies for a Dragonite catch on a Pineapp or something. It's pretty crazy. Also, Natu can be a ditto in disguise. So if you're looking for ditto, catch every single Natu you see during this event. Now we do have the new Pokemon Wimpod, which evolves into Gosliopod for 400 candies. We're going to take a look at this Pokemon. Is it any good? Check it out right now. Galissapod is a bug and water type Pokemon. Has a base attack of 218, base stamina of 181, and base defense of 226, with a max CP at level 50 of 3,575. In the game files right now, so it could change upon release, for fast moves, it can learn Fury Cutter, Metal Claw, and Waterfall, and for charge moves, it can learn X Scissor, Aqua Jet, and Aerial Ace. Let's take a look at if this Pokemon's any good. As far as a water type rate attacker, this thing will not be good at all. It's gonna be like 40th in terms of overall water type rate attackers. And same as a bug type rate attacker, like 20th overall bug type rate attacker. Just avoid this thing for raids. Now, as far as this thing in the Great League goes, again, it's gonna struggle. Got shafted in the move department, running Waterfall, X Scissor, and Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace is such a bad charge move. As you can see against the Great League meta, when there's a circle, it means it loses. When there's an X, it means it wins, and it's losing a decent amount. Ultra League is gonna look the pretty much the exact same. Struggling against a lot of Pokemon, it does beat Talonflame, but loses hard to Registeel. And the Master League is just like horrendous to look at. To better show off how bad this Pokemon got shafted, when going up against a meta threat like Walrin, in which Galissapod resists every single charge move from Walrin, it only wins in two shield scenarios, when Galissapod shields once and Walrin shields zero times, or when Galissapod shields twice and Walrin shields zero times. Other than that, Galissapod loses that matchup every single time. That's embarrassing. So all in all, Galissapod is a Pokemon you can completely avoid, and unless there is a last minute move change or a PvP update in the future, this Pokemon will most likely just go down the drain as trash to keep in your bag. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into Mega Evolution and what Mega is going to be the best to Mega Evolve during this event. Now, I took a look at all the wild spawns, and based off all the wild spawns, this is how many of each type there is. As you can see, the most is going to be normal type. There is eight normal type Pokemon, and the only normal type Megas we have in the game is going to be Pidgeot and Lopunny. I would actually recommend Mega Evolve during this event and Mega Pidgeot because it'll hit all of the normal type Pokemon, but it'll also hit Dragonite, which is a Pokemon you're definitely going to be getting extra XL candy for. If you don't know when you Mega Evolve a Pokemon, depending on the what level it is, you can get extra candy, extra XL candy, and extra XP for catching Pokemon that share the same type as the Mega. So definitely go ahead and Mega Evolve Pidgeot during this event, but really I think it's going to depend on what Pokemon you really need XL candies for. For example, if you still need, you know, Charmander XL candies to max out a Charizard for the Mega form, then obviously go ahead and Mega Evolve a Fire type Mega, like Mega Houndoom or even a Mega Charizard. So it's going to be a personal preference, but if you want to hit the most amount of Pokemon, I would go with the Mega Pidgeot. Now, since we've covered the spawns, what do you do once you've got all the spawns? And that is going to be trade. During the season of Go, you do get one guaranteed XL candy every time you trade away a Pokemon if you're above level 31, and as well as one bonus candy. So any Pokemon you catch here that we mentioned that are good for Megas, good for raids, good in the Master League, or you need XL candies for, like the Umbreon in the Ultra League, go ahead and save those Pokemon and trade them away to a friend to get XL candies. Trading away, you know, 100 Magikarp, for example, that's 100 Magikarp XL candy right there. Also, when you do trade, there's a chance you get Lucky Pokemon, which Lucky Pokemon are cheaper to power up and have an IV floor of 12, 12, 12, which is like a best of both worlds. You also do get two special trades every single day. So trading something like a shiny or a legendary every single day to try to get a lucky, for example, like mirror trading, you know, two Mewtwo's every single day. Who knows your Mewtwo might go lucky. You'll be able to power up that Mewtwo for cheaper. And who knows, maybe you end up getting a random Hundo Mewtwo from trade. The topic of Mewtwo, let's talk about Mewtwo. It's going to be learning Psy Strike and Shadow Ball and what move is going to be the best to get. Now I'm going to have a full little short coming out about this topic. Is Shadow Ball Mewtwo or Psy Strike Mewtwo better? But I do want to quickly just cover it. They're both good. You're going to want to get both Shy Strike and Shadow Ball Mewtwo because they are both going to be good for raid attackers. And if you're running a Mewtwo in PvP in the Master League specifically, you're going to want to have both of them on the Pokemon. So you're going to have to Elite TM at one of them at minimum. So really, there's no better time to raid Mewtwo, guys. You raid Mewtwo both times. Make sure you have a couple Shadow Ball ones and a couple Psy Strike ones. And who knows, maybe in the future, people will be asking for these and you can get a good trade from them as well. Also on screen will be some counters if you want to go ahead and pause, but I have already dropped a full counter guide short on the channel today. Go check that out if you need more details on how to take down Mewtwo. Now, Shiny Melton is finally coming back to Pokemon Go. I'm super excited for this. How do you go ahead and get it? You're going to need a mystery box. Now, I've dropped a video this morning about how to get a mystery box, but let me run through it quickly in short for anyone who doesn't want to watch that video. It's very simple. You're just going to need to have 
a Pokemon Home account. Link your Pokemon Home account in your settings in Pokemon Go. You can click Pokemon Home, and then in here, you can link your account. You can then click Send a Pokemon to Pokemon Home, click Continue, and then go ahead and follow the process of sending a Pokemon, and you will get a mystery box. You can come into your storage. You'll see mystery box. You can go ahead and click on it. It will go ahead and open up. And for the next hour, you will have Melton Spawns. Now, note, you can only open a mystery box every single three days. I believe I did the calculations, and if you open a mystery box starting tomorrow, once the event starts at 10 a.m., and then until the end of the event, you can open a mystery box four or four or five times, which I believe is like 300 Melton spawns, which is 300 shiny Melton checks. You have a pretty good odds of getting a shiny Melton from that. So make sure start of the event every single three days, you're opening a Melton box. You're not sleeping on it. Send a Pokemon to Pokemon home every three days, get a new Melton box, go ahead and do it. And if you need to know how to get a Melton box, I will link below my video or check out my video from this morning, the quick one minute guide on how to get it. It goes in depth. Final thing I want to talk about is going to be metal tips. You need 35 platinum Mel's go from level 48 to 49 in Pokemon Go. What platinum Mel should you go after during this event? First of all, we have the TCG hat Pikachu spawning in the wild during this event. And if you haven't completed your Pikachu fan mill, catch a thousand Pikachus, a perfect opportunity to do this. And you can even receive a Pikachu from trade from a friend. It counts towards this medal. So if you and your friend catch a bunch of them, mirror trade them, works towards a medal. We also have the youngster medal, catch a thousand tiny Rattatas. A tiny Rattata is a Rattata under 1.40 kilograms. And you can actually see it on the Rattata screen, how much it weighs. That counts as a tiny Rattata and Rattata, a lowland Rattata spawn during this event. Catch as many as you can to work on this medal. And again, just like the Pikachu, you can actually trade for these tiny Rattatas. So if you receive a tiny Rattata from trade, it will count towards this medal. On top of that, we also have the Magikarp spawning during this event. So if you haven't completed your Fisher badge, which I haven't, catch a thousand big Magikarp, a perfect opportunity to take a big chunk out of it. A big Magikarp is something over 13.13 kilograms. So if you catch a Magikarp over that, save it and go ahead and trade it with a friend, work on this badge, and then also just catch as many Magikarps as you can. You might be able to finish this badge. We also have the Rising Star Medal, defeat 150 species of Pokemon in raids. Take a look at the raid roster. If you haven't raided one of these species of Pokemon at least once, raid it once to work on your Rising Star Medal. Finally, we have the Successor Medal, Mega Evolve a Pokemon a thousand times. We do have all three of the Mega Kanto starters in Mega Raids. It's a perfect opportunity to stock up a lot of Mega Energy for these Pokemon, level them up fast, and then you can just Mega Evolve them back and forth um, and work on this metal evolving a thousand times. I believe it's like nine Mega Energy each Mega Evolve if you have a Mega at level three. So if you have a Mega Charizard at level three, get a bunch of Mega Energy for it and then just Mega Evolve it and then Mega Evolve a different Pokemon back and forth and back and forth and you're getting really cheap Mega Evolutions to work on this metal. With that being said though, that is pretty much the TCG event, guys. I hope you guys are excited for it. it doesn't look as fun as the adventure week, I will say, but there is a lot of spawns in there and a lot of opportunities for you guys to get a lot of mega Pokemon prep for a lot of mega Pokemon because there's a lot of Pokemon spawn in the wild, which you can get XL candies and all that jazz for. But that's it, guys. I'm sending you all some shiny luck on Shiny Melton. Hopefully you guys get it. I want to get myself a second one. We're going to see you all in the next one. Fall from this one. Peace.